Hello, my name is Virginia Pascual. I am the Rone Menschel Professor of Pediatrics and Director of the Drucker Institute for Children's Health at Wild Cornell Medicine in New York. In this video, I will narrate a few animated representations of these regulated immune cascades that induce the development of systemic lupus erythematosus, of, or SLE, and drive disease progression. The serious management challenges and the deleterious consequences of lupus, including the heterogeneous patient presentation, multi-organ damage that evolves over, over time, the excessive morbidity and mortality, and the current lack of a cure, highlight the urgency of early and accurate diagnosis, detailed monitoring of clinical manifestations, and aggressive escalation of therapy whenever necessary. The etiology of lupus is multifactorial and includes contributions from genetics, epigenetics, immune and hormonal dysregulation, and environmental influences. One hallmark of the disease is the development of autoantibodies, which patients may begin producing years before overt symptoms emerge. Patients with lupus can seek medical care for a seemingly unending list of symptoms, including arthritis, rash, alopecia, vasculitis, nephritis, serositis, and many others. In fact, nearly every organ of the body can be affected by lupus, although not usually simultaneously. Symptoms typically wax and wane over time, with progressive organ damage potentially accruing during each new disease flare. The pathogenic contribution of certain immune cells in lupus are well known. For example, subpopulations of mature B lymphocytes that produce autoantibodies expand in the blood of the patients. In addition to autoantibody production, B cells present autoantigens, which induce T cell activation and pro-inflammatory cytokine production. These processes reciprocally contribute to dysregulated signaling and altered effector functions of various T cell subpopulations. For example, the number and the activation status of the T cells that help B cells produce autoantibodies increase, attenuating the ability of the host to restrict the autoimmune process. Circulating immune complexes activate the complement system and induce inflammation and damage otherwise healthy cells and tissues. In some patients, the level of complement activation correlates with overall lupus disease activity, especially early on in the illness. Immune complexes deposit in the basement membrane of the skin and kidneys, markedly contributing to lupus cutaneous and renal manifestations. Antinuclear antibodies can be detected in the vast majority of patients with active disease, and antibodies to double-stranded DNA are a relatively specific diagnostic marker of lupus. As for the innate immune system, many patients with lupus show excessive type 1 interferon signaling. Interferons are normally produced by leukocytes, fibroblasts, and many other cells during innate immune responses to viral infections. Studies of patients with lupus have shown the extinct gene expression patterns induced by, by type 1 interferons in blood samples. This is the so-called interferon signature. Type 1 interferon signals are transduced into cells by the type 1 interferon receptor, also known as IFNAR. A more robust interferon signature has been linked to higher lupus disease activity and to the presence of autoantibodies. For example, Interferon alpha is thought to contribute to breaking through self-tolerance thresholds by activating antigen-presenting cells. As a result, blocking type 1 interferon proteins from activating downstream pathways has emerged as a potential and promising treatment strategy for lupus. The relative contributions of particular dysregulated immune pathways can vary greatly across different lupus patients. Until relatively recently, available therapies relied on non-specific immunosuppression, leaving patients open to off-target adverse effects, such as increased vulnerability to infections. Some new and emerging therapeutic options for lupus have been designed to interfere with specific immune cell populations 
known to be involved in disease development, persistence, and progression. Examples include belimumab, a monoclonal antibody that reduces B cell numbers by binding to B cell lymphocyte stimulator or BLIS. Overexpression of BLIS promotes B cell survival, including within autoreactive B cell subsets, whereas antagonizing BLIS using the monoclonal antibody belimumab induces autoreactive B cell death. Positive clinical trial results with belimumab led to a 2011 US FDA approval as the only targeted therapy for adult patients with active autoantibody positive lupus who inadequately respond to standard therapy. And the first drug of any kind specifically indicated for lupus in more than half a century. Atasiseft is another agent that reduces B cell numbers. Still in development for lupus, the recombinant fusion proteins binds to and blocks two cytokines, BLIS and APRIL. Preventing these factors from binding to their receptors on lymphocytes reduces B cell survival and autoantibody production. Another approach to the treatment of lupus has focused on turning off the T cells responsible for recognizing autoantigens on antigen presenting cells and stimulating B cell antibody production. For example, Avatacept is a CTLA4 fusion protein FDA approved to treat rheumatoid arthritis, psoriatic arthritis, and juvenile idiopathic arthritis. Avatacept acts as a negative T cell modulator by interrupting important costimulation signals that are required for T cell activation. One strategy to induce T cell tolerance is being tested using synthetic peptides such as Regerimod. This tolerogenic T cell PAC peptide downregulates immune signaling and quiets cellular activity associated with lupus without interfering with normal immune functioning. Although the idea of targeting specific antigens over broad immunosuppression is attractive, this approach has limitations in that the exact autoantigens are unknown in lupus. Because type 1 interferon signaling has been repeatedly demonstrated to contribute to lupus pathogenesis, clinical research has focused on specifically blocking the effects of downstream pathways. Several agents have been developed to target different aspects of the type 1 interferon signaling cascades. Cifalimumab, an antibody to interferon alpha, yielded positive phase 2 study results in an extrarenal study. Another fully human monoclonal antibody, anifrolumab, demonstrated greater pharmacodynamic effects as it binds to the type 1 interferon receptor and blocks the action of all five type 1 interferons, not just interferon alpha, preventing receptor activation and dampening the effects of the full complement of type 1 interferon proteins. Notably, Two targeted therapies that have been FDA approved for other autoimmune disorders are being studied in patients with lupus. Baricitinib, an oral Janus kinase inhibitor, and Ustekinumab, an anti-interleukin-12 and anti-interleukin-23 monoclonal antibody, have produced positive results in recent clinical trials. A number of other agents are in various stages of clinical development as well. To date, however, Several promising agents have produced mixed results in later stage clinical trials, suggesting that further studies and sub-analysis may be needed to identify which approaches are more effective for various patients' groups that might be driven by unique molecular pathways. With many clinical trials currently underway, we are hopeful that we are soon entering a new era of lupus management that will focus on precision management for individual patients.